So the lineup gate number nine, then on the inside for France is Dimitri Berchet. Gate number two for Finland, it's Timo Lati. Rasmus Jensen coming out for his first ride for Denmark out of gate number three. And gate number four for Australia is Max Frick. Uh, certainly Rasmus Jensen will not be uh, scared to put himself about. He is a hard charger and there's no doubt he's an entertaining rider to uh, watch and he's an entertaining rider to have a chat with. He's got some... Uh, he is a lively chap. Uh, we with him on the way to uh, when they were doing the track walk and he's full of life as always. Laurent Sombrier, the uh, manager of France, just keenly looking on. Pressure on France now. They brought in one of the big guns here and Dimitri Berger. Berger has had a couple of strong rides tonight so far with two second places, so going quite nicely. And if Berger gets in the mood, it can be quite a spoiler. It's got that inside gate, so that could be quite useful. Heat number nine. Third block of races about to get underway. Ooh, a little bit of movement from Larte. Larte absolutely flew out of gate number two. He stamps his authority on the third. Yeah, no real surprise that, that the red lights are flashing on. Bit of movement on the start line. And uh, Timo Larte, possibly the one that's going to be penalised here. Yeah, I'm sure I'll get a warning for that. I don't think he was actually moving when the tapes went up, but he certainly could have unsettled the opposition there. The referee uh, Alexander Leotisinski from the Ukraine here. You will see Ryder in the second. Uh, Gate number two, just yeah. a little bit of movement. Yeah, he was still when the tapes went up, but of course, you know, you can't be moving on the start, and uh, I think the referee will have deemed that he may have unsettled some of the opposition, and he certainly seemed to make a good start, may have gained an advantage there. Yeah, I'm not sure that um, uh, Berger would have been put off, because he's looking the other way, but um, uh, we're hearing it confirmed now that uh, Latte will now carry a warning throughout the rest of the evening. If he does something similar... Uh, he will then be excluded, so it's um, pretty draconian rules now for riders on the start line. Um, but I think probably was pulled back as a consequence of him making the start, Chris. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you, he wasn't actually rolling when the tapes went up, but he made the start, so that was, that was um, uh, probably the reason the, uh, the red light came on. Only a minute now allowed for riders to get back to tapes for the restarting. Can we have a countdown, please? Race. Phil Morris just came Can we have a countdown, please? Ten seconds! Oh, that's uh, going to be hurry up for Rasmus Jensen. This is going to be very tight indeed. Eight, seven, proper countdown here. Just about to get there with two seconds left. Wow, that was tight indeed for his first race of the night. Heat number nine, second time of asking. They all sit still, tapes up. Berger's made a good start on the inside. Oh, it's untidy going in the first corner. That allows Latte on the inside. Oh, oh Frick's gone down. Drama out of the first corner there. Rasmus Jensen, red lights on again. Drama in heat number nine. I'll tell you what, Max Frick could be in danger of going out here. I'll have to see it again. Didn't see if there was any contact, but certainly... There was contact, but it would be hard on Berger, I think. We'll have to see it again. But uh, being the exit of the first corner, uh, the referee could well exclude Frick here. See it again, Chris. Yeah, Frick coming off the outside gate four there. And uh, the rider there, Berger, just gets a bit of grip, comes across the corner. Now Max Frick's having to run. He gets a bit of a nudge from Lati there, but anybody. I tell you what... It would be very harsh there on uh, Dimitri Berger because he did get a little bit of a nudge from the inside as Lati came through there. So, uh, yeah, as we're hearing it's all four riders. I think that's the right decision, Colin. Just see there, Berger just being eased yeah. out of the way by Lati, and he had no choice. Yeah. And the right decision made by the referee there. All four back. We want to see four riders in a race. Absolutely. Tense times here in Speedway World Cup semi final number two. Look at that bunching up there. Berger a little bit all over the place initially. Yeah, he dealt with it though, and that, that obviously wasn't the problem. It's just here when Timo Lati comes through, just moves him over. At the same time, Max Rick is looking to cover the inside and stop the run up the inside of Rasmus Jensen and uh, coming together, but it is the first turn. I think it's, uh, it's the right call. So we'll uh, see it again. Dimitri Berger, of course, a former World Long Track champion, has ridden very well for France in the past. He was uh, terrific in the Manchester a couple of years ago in the Speedway of Nations, and it's uh, certainly got uh, something about him. He can be a little bit up and down at times, but... Uh, 
When he's in the mood, I can say that Berger is uh, capable of winning races anywhere, anytime. So he's got a, a second opportunity. Max Frick just uh, taking his time. There's the position we've got after eight races. Three points in front for Denmark, who are really going along nicely tonight. Australia are under pressure. They will not want to go to the race off Australia. It's going to be a tight tussle. I think that's going to go all the way. It's not over that tussle. No, no question that neither of these teams uh, want to race on Friday night. That's going to be a very, very tight one. In the past, some of the uh, race-off meetings uh, in the Speedway World Cup have been truly outstanding. Quite often, sometimes the best of the week. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, Team Sweden are there, of course, uh, with the Czech Republic already. Max Frick just having his helmet checked as he had a bit of a thump on the track. Yeah. Uh, safety first, of course. That's OK. And uh, Max Frick, who... Uh, like a lot of riders in the Speedway Grand Prix this year, just struggling for some uh, consistency, but uh, rode well, very well with uh, Jack Holder last year when they came through with a terrific result in uh, Denmark to uh, win gold there in the Speedway of Nations. That was a, a very fine display from, uh, from Australia last year in Denmark. Yeah, I don't think Max will let this unsettle him too much. He's a, he's a pretty understated, fairly laid-back sort of character. He'll keep his calm. Uh, team obviously working very Guys, hard to get things right Guys, you're taking too right long. You have to go on this. If you haven't got that ready, it's been like four minutes. If you haven't got the people to do it, you're going to have to go on that bike, sorry. Mechanics haven't got the other wheel ready yet. Sorry, Max. They haven't even changed your front wheel, mate. Yeah, well, face to to there, Bill Rice calling right the now. shots. It's, uh, you need to be more proactive right. with it, so you know? much time you can give the team there. Yeah, they're under pressure here, Australia. Uh, they're behind, three points behind Denmark. Uh, one of them big hitters here in... Uh, Certainly having to work furiously hard. They, they've changed bikes already. He didn't like the first one, so he will, will not be best pleased to have to go back out on that. Um, uh, they're working furiously hard to try and get that bike uh, ready for the restaging of uh, the race. So no, we can't um, give them much more. It's like, what, what, what's happening now? What are they doing? Well, Phil Morris is trying to be as fair as he possibly yeah. can here. Um, the other bike is ready, but uh, clearly want to get that uh, bike that was chosen for the race originally ready for the rerun. Guys, I think they're going to uh, just about do it. On. Sorry, guys. Two minutes is on, please. We're going on two. Two minutes, guys! Two minutes is on! Yeah, Phil always uh, tries to be as fair as possible. Obviously, as an ex-rider himself, he realises that uh, Max Frick was an innocent party there and he shouldn't be penalised. Uh, he should give him every opportunity to get his bike ready to go, but it seems like they've run out of time this time. Yeah, so the rider's now reappearing. It's um, taking some time to get uh, heat number nine underway here with Timo Lati already on a warning, then the clash coming out of gate turn number two. Max Frick up at tapes. So uh, he's out there, ready to go. Under pressure off of gate number four, there's no doubt about that. Frick will be desperate to try and get his front, uh, his, um, himself in front here, or at least in front of uh, Rasmus Jensen. They need to start stealing some points back off of Denmark, who are going along very nicely indeed. And Jensen certainly was well and truly amongst that. Berger was. It was all action as they came out of the first corner for the uh, second uh, staging of heat number nine. This is the third time of, of, of asking. Dima, uh, Dimitri Berger for the inside for France. Gate number two for Finland is Timo Lati. Gate number three for Denmark as Rasmus Jensen and off the outside Max Frick for Australia. Dusted himself down. Prepared to go again for the third time. Roche a little untidy on the entrance to the corner the first time around, and Dawson uh, went off with Latte charging on the inside. Yeah, that's what opened the door for Timo Latte to charge through, and that's exactly what sort of started the whole sequence of events. The dominant effect. So finally, now riders coming forward from uh, the third block of races to get underway. Here we go then. Let's hope that they uh, can get round. Up. Away we go. Certainly, Larty's made another good 
start, but Berger forces his way through there. There's tight there with Rasmus Jensen. Frick certainly coming through, but Jensen certainly... Oh, it's very nearly running in the back of Berger. Here comes Larte on the inside. Oh, my goodness, how on earth did they avoid each other? That was a strong move there from Timo Larte. But out in front, Berger, who's had a couple of second places already tonight, going great guns for France. Yeah, Dodgem's on the opening laps here in Heat 9, but it's Berger. What a great first turn for him. He didn't actually make a clear start, but he just was determined to get to the corner, almost ran his wheels over the white line and got himself to the front and he's not looking back. Uh, but it's a great race from the reserve there for Denmark. Rasmus Jensen really, really working hard to stay ahead of Lati. It's good news for France though. They're looking good for a first victory of the night and it's bad news for Australia with Jensen in yeah. second place and Max Rick out the back. Certainly Denmark are going to extend their lead. Look at Berger, he's in the mood tonight. No question about that. Fine rider and this is a fine display from France. Brilliant way to come through there. Tight for third. Very tight between Frick and Latte on that charge to the chequered flag. But oh, Jensen in second place. Certainly oh, Denmark oh, extending oh, their lead. We'll oh, wait for the confirmation of third place there because it got awfully close indeed. But what we do know is France were desperate for points and they pick up a valuable win there in heat number nine. Smashing right for uh, Berger there. So two second places and a win tonight. That is uh, that's pretty impressive from him. It's very impressive. Yeah, it is impressive. And this first turn was impressive too because he doesn't actually make a clear start. Look how narrow he is. He's got the uh, front wheel on the actual uh, Astro turf there and it gets awfully tight as they come down the back straight on the opening lap. And uh, Rasmus Jensen there does well to avoid the back wheel of Berger as he turns in the corner. It gets tight for Max Frick. And uh, Timo Lati once again working so hard out there for Finland. And uh, he realises at this point, of course, that France are out front and he's got to try and get uh, up behind him, but no way past Rasmus Jensen. Jensen wasn't quick, but he rode very defensively and had to, and he was, a, he was not going to get past by Larty, no chance at all. And that did give Frick half a chance here. And we're not sure what it was tied, but uh, Larty just about hung on, and that was a, a blow for Australia. So the result then...